This is Larry the Barberman back again after a very long absence. As I explained in my last video, I've been interviewing barbers all around the world and the UK. And for that reason, I haven't had time to make very many how-to videos. The how-to video is now back. Now, obviously when I'm traveling around the world and traveling around the country visiting barber shops, I get to see some of the mistakes that are being made that lead to me getting requests to make videos, getting requests for me to help them uh, to overcome these problems. And one of the biggest problems I've seen with barbers is having a lack of tools. Now these tools are your bread and butter uh, clippers. These are how you make your money. When these are running at 100% efficiency, you, are, you have a nice steady workflow. When these are giving you problems, then your workflow will be uh, scuppered. So it's really important that you get an array of tools, not just the one screwdriver, assuming that one screwdriver will do everything because it won't. That can actually lead to more problems with your hair clippers. For example, if you um, put a screwdriver in this that is too small, you're gonna end up boring away uh, wearing away the actual pattern of the Phillips, which will mean you may not even be able to loosen it at all. Fortunately, I've got a hack today to show you that if you have worn out one of these uh, screws by putting a screwdriver in that is too small, I have a way for you to get it out. So that's problem number one. So imagine on the Saturday, you need someone's knocked your blade and it's out from the zero gap and you're going with a small screwdriver and you uh, wear out the pattern of the screw, you disfigure it to the point that you can't loosen it. That could mess up your whole Saturday if you're one of these barbers that only have one hair clipper. So that's the downside of using one that's too small. On the other hand, let's say you was trying to zero gap one of these, which is a trimmer. It takes a smaller, finer uh, screw on the trimmer and your screwdriver is too big. When you're trying to zero gap um, one of the T outliners, the big challenge is keeping that blade in position. And the way that you keep that blade in position is you just loosen these two screws ever so slightly because you want the tightness of the blade to keep them in position. So when, you're, when you've set the zero gap, you need to gently tighten the left, gently tighten the right, gently tighten the left, gently tighten the right. If that screw is too big, that will you're gonna to have to put too much pressure on it, which is gonna cause the blade to move. So again, this is another reason why you need to have the right tools for the right job, else you're going to spoil your tools that actually make you your money. It's gonna kill your workflow and if you kill your workflow, you're going to kill your income and kill the money going into your pocket. So please, I urge you to invest in the right tools. Not just any tools, but good quality tools. Now, I found a company uh, on eBay. They stock this range of tools, which is called uh, Tool Hub. This is a really good uh, set of screwdrivers. It's got a nice array of Phillips and flathead screwdrivers. So you've got a bigger one there, which is good for doing your uh, power screw. The power screw is the screw that's on the side of the kipper. When you're, it's always normally a flathead, you basically screw in that in to get the arm closer to the motor. So that's what's happening. So you need a good quality flathead screwdriver in order to achieve that job. This can be pretty much achieved with any screwdriver, but you want to have a good quality, medium sized screwdriver. And it's also got some nice uh, sized uh, Phillips screwdrivers in there, which fit perfectly in the likes of the master. You've got a nice snug fit in there, if you can see that. And also you want to ensure that you've got screwdrivers that have got a really good grip because like I said, when it comes to the zero gapping process, you want to have a nice grip, um, both of the, the point of the screwdriver 
in the screw and you want a nice grip on the handle as well. If you get a good quality set of screwdrivers, you're gonna achieve that this grip. And like I said, this is something that you can get from the tool hub. That's a nice array of medium size screwdrivers, which will be used to make various adjustments on the likes of a hair clipper being the master, fade master, the senior, wall super taper. This is the kind of kit that you have. I'm gonna leave a link for these down in the comment section below. Also, when I'm making adjustments on the likes of a trimmer, where you have smaller, finer screws, I have this precision kit where it's got an array of uh, small, flathead and Phillips attachments in here. And you've also got a handle that's telescopic so it can help you with a host of different jobs. Also, if you've got really bad eyesight, it comes with a magnifying glass. So once you've just broken these ever so slightly so you can position it for a, a zero gap, you can actually look along the blade without killing your eyes. So that's a really good kit. This is the precision kit, which I would strongly recommend that you get. If you're serious about adjusting your hair clippers and trimmers on a continuous basis to ensure that they're at their sharpest and you want your workflow to be right, you need to have the correct tools or you're gonna damage your existing or your money making tools, yeah? So if you've got to think, back in the old days, they didn't have disposable razors, so all barbers had to be able to sharpen the um, razors, the cutthroat razors, using a stone and oil and strop. There's very few people now that can actually do that job. This is what barbers had to do. It's so much easier now because you've got electric uh, clippers and trimmers, and you just need to learn to tune these things with a screwdriver. There's no thought needs to go into it whatsoever is you've got a screwdriver and a screw you just need to adjust it and make minor adjustments there's no carving of metal so you know this is a relatively easy job if you've got the right tools now as i was saying i was going to leave you with a hack because i've been telling you off for most of this video so i was saying if by chance you did use the wrong screwdriver an old rusty one which again doesn't look good in a barbershop environment and you wore out the screw the hack is very simple to get it out and that, again it's something that you wouldn't really want to happen on a saturday because let's say you did destroy that screw it would be a long process to go back to the manufacturer and get one tiny screw that could end up costing you you know 10 pounds with the just for delivery for that one screw anyway getting back to what i was saying you've destroyed the screw you just need a rubber band like this. Your good screwdriver or your bad screwdriver, I'd recommend a good screwdriver. You basically put the rubber band over the hole that you've destroyed. You push down with a lot of pressure. This is why you're gonna need the good quality screwdriver and that will give you the grip that you need. Yeah? So basically the elastic band acts like a glove or you know sometimes you're trying to loosen a bottle of drink and you can't quite get the grip with your hand you put a tea towel over it and then you can turn it so that's a little hack if you find yourself in trouble and you destroyed the screw and you don't know how to get it out it's just a question of placing the rubber band over it and then with pressure applying the screwdriver into the hole or the groove and then turn it and then it will come straight out because the elastic band acts as a super grip. So both of these screwdriver kits, like I said, there'll be a link below if you're in the UK, you can, I would strongly recommend that you've got every tool for every screw on every clipper to keep your workflow going. So that's it, another how-to video from Larry the Barberman with some super tips and advice for you. I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.